Hello. As I cycled into work this morning, I noticed just how mild it felt and what a contrast, I thought, compared with the first few weeks of the winter. And that contrast is particularly evident on this graph. Now, this shows the average temperature across the UK each day of the winter so far. This is the average winter temperature, and this is what's happened during this current winter. And you can see it turned really quite exceptionally cold around the middle of the month, 12th to the 16th of December, and then a rapid flip back to mild just before Christmas, and really it's continued on and off mild since then. So the big question a lot of people are interested in right now is will we go back to that cold weather or will we just stick with mild weather for the foreseeable future? And because of such interest in this, I'm gonna be brave in this 10 day trend and not just look at the next 10 days, but try and answer that question for the rest of January. More on that in a moment, but let's take a look at why it's mild at the moment. And the answer lies uh, thousands of feet above us the jet stream, and the jet stream, of course, at this time of year, it develops areas of low pressure, sends them towards us, and brings spells of rain, wind, and mild air from the west or the southwest, and that's exactly what it's doing right now. One area of low pressure departing at the time of recording, the next brewing, picked up by the jet stream, you can see, and allowed to deepen and starting to approach as we start off Thursday. Ahead of that, actually some clear skies, a touch of frost even for the north of Scotland, but otherwise most places mild as we begin Thursday, especially towards the southwest where we're seeing this warm front move in. A weak feature, but well, it's gonna thicken up the cloud. It's gonna bring some spots of rain. Nothing significant across England and Wales. Some places will avoid the rain and stay dry. But for Western Scotland and Northern Ireland, it does turn wet by the afternoon. Some heavy rain and persistent wet weather, especially for Western Scotland and a freshening breeze. And that breeze coming from the Southwest means that it will be mild across the board, especially in the South, once again, 12, 13, perhaps 14 Celsius. Although it's a relatively mild but dry day across England, Wales, Eastern Scotland, the wet weather does move through during the hours of darkness. A cold front is more active as it pushes in during the evening and early hours of Friday. And behind that cold front, the winds strengthen, especially for Scotland. It's gonna be a very blustery night here. Here's the wind gust forecast for Scotland uh, and the rest of the UK for Friday night, Thursday night, I should say, and into the early hours of Friday. The colors here correspond to the key on the right. And what you can see is that 60 mile per hour wind gusts are a possibility across Western Scotland, perhaps the odd spot getting 70 mile per hour wind gusts. So uh, coastal gales for Western Scotland and uh, blustery across the rest of the UK as this low moves through. Then on Friday, this ridge of high pressure follows, a very subtle ridge, but it does mean that it'll be a bit quieter for a time, turning less windy, less wet, only for a few hours before the next system starts to push in its rain and wind on Friday night. Once again, much of this rain goes through, especially in the west, overnight, although I think eastern areas will see the wet weather during a Saturday morning and clearing around lunchtime. Then this area of low pressure, it's a big beast, but it's a slow moving creature and it's really gonna be with us all weekend. But once it's pushed its main band of persistent rain in, it's mainly showers that are coming in from the west and southwest. So a lot of showers returning across the UK on Saturday. Some heavy downpours, some thunder, some hail, but some bright spells in between. Gusty winds as well, coastal gales in the west. But what we're also gonna see is some interesting stuff come our way from Scandinavia. This very cold air starts to move in around the huge area of low pressure and then via Iceland come in from the northwest. Now, it starts off very cold air of Scandinavia, but of course it moves over a lot of sea, so it's heavily modified by the time it gets to the UK. What it does mean is that this very cold air moves over warm seas, so it will really pep up the showery activity, and that means there'll be a lot of heavy downpours around on Sunday, especially in the west. But it also means that temperatures are going to be dropping because we're not, we've not got this southwesterly air, so, air, air mass, we've got this colder air mass coming from Scandinavia all the way around the top of the UK and coming in from the west. So temperatures effectively by Sunday back to around average for the time of year, seven to 10 Celsius, less mild, but not cold by any stretch of the imagination. Certainly by night, it's gonna be frost free because of the breeze. Now on Sunday and into Monday, that low pressure stays with us. But 
What's showing up in the latest run of the Met Office model is this area of low pressure picked up by the jet stream and deepened and sent towards the Bay of Biscay and perhaps just affecting the south of the UK for a time as well to bring strong winds and some heavy rain. However, we don't just look at this latest run of the Met Office model. We look at lots of runs of the Met Office model and lots of runs of the European model and the American model and other computer models. So there's a lot of computer models that we look at because of chaos theory, the idea that very subtle changes at the start of a forecast can have big differences when you look beyond a few days' time. And that's certainly the case with this area of low pressure. In fact, it's not even in most computer model runs at the moment. It's entirely missing. I'll just take a look at a snapshot. This is midnight Sunday, and this shows the pressure pattern from many different runs of the Met Office model. They've all got the big area of low pressure somewhere over the UK, but most of them don't have that smaller area of low pressure. It's just this one character here that has member four, an area of low pressure across southern parts of the UK to bring strong winds and heavy rain to the south. Now, there'd be significant impacts from this if it happened, but since it's missing from all these other computer model runs, what that suggests is it's fairly unlikely. It's about 10 to 15 percent chance of that happening. So something to bear in mind, keep an eye on, but it's not that likely at the moment we consider to happen on Sunday night and into Monday. What's more likely is the bigger area of low pressure gradually fills and moves away. The showers start to ease on Monday and into Tuesday, but it stays unsettled through next week. Again, this is uh, the, a summary of all the different computer model runs from the European model. And it shows the most likely outcome for the middle of next week, which has low pressure to the northwest of the UK, this unsettled west to southwest of the airflow. Again, Wednesday there, Tuesday there. And the wettest weather in the west, quite windy, but also mild. The mild theme is quite clear from the computer model output. This shows the temperature trend for a midpoint of the UK. Could have chosen anywhere in the UK. They're all showing a similar sort of trend. The red line here is the average for the UK uh, for the time of year, the uh, average daytime temperature. And the blue line is the average overnight temperature. And the red boxes are the forecast uh, daytime temperatures and the blue boxes are the forecast overnight temperatures for the next couple of weeks. The bigger the boxes, the greater the uncertainty. But what you can see is a clear trend for the temperatures to get back to around average after a mild start. That's Sunday, Monday. That's that cold air of Scandinavia coming our way over the seas, but only uh, reducing temperatures to around average. Then back to above average. Even though these boxes get bigger, most of these boxes are above the average line. So that suggests strong confidence for above average temperatures for the next couple of weeks. So no sign on any of this uh, computer model output for anything significantly colder than what we've got at the moment. In fact, it's more likely to stay mild. But we don't just look at computer model output when we're looking beyond a couple of weeks. We look at something called teleconnections. Teleconnections are looking at what the weather's doing elsewhere in the world and the kinds of uh, downstream impacts that can have on the UK's weather. And one thing we look at is the stratospheric polar vortex, which essentially is a ring of strong winds in the stratosphere, 50 kilometers above sea level, that circle the North Pole. And when that ring of strong winds around the polar vortex is strong, it tends to help the jet stream uh, come in from the west. It tends to assist. It's like a tailwind. It tends to keep the jet stream strong. And that means westerlies are more likely than northerlies or easterlies. So more of the same, essentially more of what we've got at the moment. That's more likely when we've got this strong stratospheric polar vortex. And all the uh, suggestions are that that will stay strong for the next few weeks. And that is showing up quite clearly in this sort of graph. I get that it's just a sea of blue at the moment, and it's difficult to see the details here. But what this basically shows is the latest computer model output is the top row here. It sums up all of the computer model runs, and it gives an indication of whether westerlies are more likely or easterlies are more likely. And westerlies show up as blue, easterlies as red, and this goes out to the rest of January, and basically it's blues all the way. So that suggests that all the computer model runs are suggesting westerlies are more likely than easterlies for the rest of January. However, 
That's not the end of the story because there's something else that's happening in the Pacific at the moment. In fact, an enhanced area of thunderstorms is affecting the West Pacific. This happens from time to time. It's called the Madden-Julian Oscillation. And when we get this enhanced activity of thunderstorms in the West Pacific, it can reverberate some energy and disrupt the jet stream in the Pacific, which then ultimately downstream has an impact on the jet stream that's coming in from the Atlantic. It takes about a week to 10 days for that influence to take place for the UK. But because we're currently seeing that thunderstorm activity um, across the West Pacific, there are some hints that our own jet stream might become a bit more amplified in about a week or two. And that's also showing up on one of these diagrams. Again, the colors represent the likelihood of different things happening. But in this instance, the latest run of models is in the top row and the rest of January they're shown. In this instance, the blues show the likelihood of low pressure effect in the UK and the reds show the likelihood of higher pressure effect in the UK. So although we're likely to see westerlies through the rest of January, this suggests that higher pressure is perhaps a bit more likely around weeks three and four. Now that wouldn't necessarily lead to prolonged northerly or easterly winds or a return to brutal cold weather, but it would suggest that something a little less unsettled perhaps is favored beyond 10 days, and that would increase the chance of frost, fog, and a slight, uh, slightly increased risk of lower temperatures. But nothing significantly cold expected for the rest of January, no beast from the east or anything like that, just perhaps something a little less unsettled, a little less mild beyond 10 days.